Phoenix is a beautiful person, not only to look at, as you can see, but also to know. Phoenix is a very compassionate young lady. She has a very keen sense of fairness. She uh, has a great sense of humor. Phoenix is, she's everything to us. She is my only child and I love her dearly and I miss her and I want to see her. I need to see Phoenix. We need to see Phoenix. We need to know. We, we need to know what has happened to Phoenix. Phoenix Lucille Colden was born Phoenix Reeves on May 23, 1988, to parents Goldia and Lawrence. Her father Lawrence adopted her soon after she was born and her name was changed to Colden. She was born in California but the family moved to an area of Spanish for Lawrence's job. She was an only child, inquisitive, bright and creative, Phoenix showed incredible talent and promise from a young age. The Coldens were a deeply spiritual and religious family and Phoenix would attend church regularly and she was also in the choir. Friends of Phoenix said she led a very disciplined life and that her parents, although were loving and supportive, were also very strict with high expectations. Friends claimed that Phoenix had expressed a desire to break away from her sheltered life and experience everything that came with school and college. She had been mostly homeschooled from the sixth grade. She worked hard at all her studies and was a very high achiever. Her main passion, however, appeared to be music, where she excelled, playing violin and piano. She was also a regional junior fencing champion. In 2007, she enrolled at the University of Missouri and by this point had already moved out of the family home and into an apartment. Her parents signed the lease, believing she was moving in with a friend. Her parents also said that it was around this time that Phoenix started acting differently and began arguing with them frequently. However, this was a big change for Phoenix. She had gone from a relatively sheltered upbringing to a completely new and open world at university, which may have caused some tensions between her and her parents. What her parents didn't realise, however, was that Phoenix was in a relationship with someone named Michael B, and she was actually living in the apartment with him. Her mother said that although she visited the apartment regularly, there was nothing to indicate she had a secret live-in boyfriend. Her friends speculated she may have felt this was the only way she could see Michael B and she had to keep it a total secret. When Goldia found out about the relationship, she said that Michael B was not someone she would have approved of her daughter dating. Phoenix began to miss her college classes, which culminated in her failing to register for her fall semester, another fact her parents and friends would not find out about for a long time. During the early months of 2011, it is said that Phoenix began taking money from the family safe. The money was in saving bonds and although it was Phoenix's money, it was in her mother's name. A total of around two and a half thousand dollars was taken and where the money ended up remains a mystery. In May of 2011, she moved back into the family home. Her mother said this was purely down to finances. Phoenix was able to study at university and stay at home and this was far more cost effective than her parents paying out for an apartment. Little did Goldia know, but Phoenix was not attending university at this time. When she returned from college, everyone who knew Phoenix described her as a totally different person. Her friends said that she had started experimenting with drugs, arguing with her parents more, and pushing people away. Her best friend and neighbour Akira commented that she wasn't the friend she once knew. She said she seemed paranoid, irritable and erratic and she was convinced that she was being followed. During a brief and trivial argument with Akira, Phoenix pulled a knife and brandished it at her. She kept this 10-inch blade down the side of her car door, with no explanation as to why. Although the pair would move past the fight, Akira could tell that something was very wrong, and no one could seemingly get to the bottom of it. Phoenix would often sit in her car for long periods of time, spending hours on her phone, and her mother began to wonder why she needed even more privacy than that of her own room in her own house. It was later discovered that Phoenix had two phones. One was on a family plan, and one she was seemingly paying for herself. 
It seemed that Phoenix's life was far more complex and complicated than anyone had realised. December 18th, 2011 would start as any other day in the Colden household. Phoenix and her mum attended the Sunday church service at 11am, where Phoenix played in the bell choir. Fellow churchgoers and her pastor said nothing seemed off or amiss with Phoenix that day. Phoenix and her mum travelled back in Phoenix's car, briefly stopping at a convenience store on the way. During the car journey, Phoenix said to her mother that she wanted things to get back to how they had used to be. Goldia seemed hopeful that this would be a step forward in their relationship. They returned to the house at around 2pm. Phoenix changed into some sweatpants and a hoodie and went outside to play basketball. Just after 3pm, Phoenix grabbed her phone, passed her father, who had just returned from work without engaging in conversation, and got into her 1998 Chevy Blazer and pulled away from the house. Assuming she was going shopping or visiting friends, Lawrence didn't think anything of this. But sadly, this would be the last time he would ever see his daughter. And that is where the 18th of December takes a sinister turn. Phoenix always stuck to her parents' curfew of 1am and had never stayed away from the house all night. And when she still wasn't home the following morning, Goldia knew in her gut that something serious had happened to her child. When she phoned the St. Louis County Police Department to report her daughter as missing, she was met with a lot of pushback. The officer who took the call told Goldia that Phoenix was a 23-year-old woman and was old enough to make her own decisions about where she went. But Goldia knew despite this, this was simply not in her daughter's nature and her age was irrelevant. The officer ran Phoenix's car number plate through the system and said it hadn't turned up anything. Goldia and Lawrence were now frantic with worry so decided to take matters into their own hands. They phoned around the hospitals to see if anyone fitting her description had been admitted and began circulating flyers. They contacted various television networks begging for her case to be circulated, but the networks failed to pick up the case. No one was following up on the case or reporting on it and the Colden family felt ignored and let down. Valuable time was being lost and Phoenix's family were working incredibly hard to keep the case in people's minds, trying to make up for the lack of coverage and interest in it. About two weeks later, her parents finally located her car. It was sitting impounded in a tow yard having been there since the day she disappeared. The car was discovered just a 25 minute drive away from her home at 5.30pm. This was around three hours after Phoenix had left her house. The car had been impounded less than an hour after it was found. Goldia and Lawrence Colden, the parents of missing Phoenix Colden. You, you called police and you told them my daughter is gone and this is the car she was last seen in. What's your reaction to the fact that cops impounded that car very quickly but didn't make the connection that the car they were looking for was in their impound lot for I don't know how long days. We reported our daughter missing the following day, which would be the 19th. We didn't find that car for two weeks. It was in the impound lot. And only through the diligence of a close friend did we find that car. In 2018, the network Oxygen looks into Phoenix Colden's case. Investigative reporter Shondrea Thomas and retired police chief Joseph Delia headed the investigation and began uncovering more information. Shondrea Thomas was actually a huge reason that Phoenix's case was brought to the media's attention, and she fought hard to keep it there too. Joe and Shondrea looked into the state of Phoenix's car was found in. There have been many conflicting stories surrounding the car since the start of the search for Phoenix. It was originally reported to have been found on the side of the road, the engine was still running, the keys were in the ignition and the driver's side door was open. Phoenix's shoes and purse were also in the car. Shondrea and Joe met with Officer Perry who initially found the car and told them that the doors were closed. No key was in the ignition and apart from a few random miscellaneous items, there had been nothing of interest inside the vehicle. He said it looked like the car had simply been pulled over and parked, almost as if someone had run out of fuel. When Officer Perry ran the license plate through the system, it did not flag up as stolen or suspicious, and thus it was towed off. The reason this may not have flagged up was that the car was now in a different area that had a separate police department, meaning any connections to the missing Phoenix in Spanish Lake would likely not have been made. 
At the time the car was found, Phoenix was not yet listed as a missing person either. One thing that was determined about the car was that the only DNA found inside belonged to Phoenix and her parents. The location of her car rang alarm bells with Goldia. It was in a derelict, run-down and dangerous area of East St. Louis, known for crime and drugs, and her mother said she would have had no business being in that part of town. Had the car been stolen, driven there and dumped? Had she driven it there herself and left it? Or had she been snatched from inside the car? More evidence was garnered from the 2018 review of the case regarding her phone records. On the 17th of December, just a day before she was last seen, she made a total of 10 phone calls to her secret boyfriend, Michael B, using the phone on her family plan. That final call was 116 minutes long. On the 18th of December, 2011, Phone records again showed that the last person she spoke to using the phone on her family plan was again Michael B. This call was made at 1.46pm and lasted just one minute. It appeared from looking at the phone records that this was the last call Phoenix ever made from that phone. Although officers said they were keeping any further information about the phone records and coordinates of the phone close to their chest while the case is still being investigated. Although people initially reported that Phoenix's boyfriend Michael B had been evasive, the investigating officers reported he was actually very cooperative and they were confident that he was in no way involved in Phoenix's disappearance. A theory that was presented early on, one that remains a theory to this day, was that she had potentially been taken by a human trafficking gang. The St. Louis area remains one of the top areas in the country for human trafficking and this fact couldn't be overlooked. The highway close to where her car had been found, Interstate 70, is referred to as the trafficking highway. This theory was further fueled when a picture of her allegedly began circulating on a sex website. But it is believed that this was most likely nothing more than a nasty hoax. Another common thought was that the pressure in Phoenix's life had resulted in her wanting to start afresh and leave everything behind. Her best friend Akira said that Phoenix had told her she had wanted to pack her things and leave. But to where? Phoenix never said. The theory that she may have ran away has always been disputed by her family. Akira would also claim that Phoenix was secretly seeing another man alongside Michael B. His name was also Mike and he was referred to as Cell Phone Mike. Akira believed this new relationship was most likely the reason for the second phone. One of Cell Phone Mike's ex-girlfriends was interviewed and she said that Mike had been violent with her during their relationship, resulting in her filing a restraining order against him. She alleged that Mike had taken an interest in Phoenix's case and would often look it up online. When she asked him about Phoenix, he replied, Why are you worrying about someone who's dead? It remains unknown if he had any involvement in Phoenix Colden's disappearance, or if he was just making a speculative, albeit crass, comment. In a now infamous and haunting video, Phoenix films herself as she sits in the car. The full video has never been released, but Shondrea Thomas and Joe Delia looked into it closely during their investigation. They took the video to an audio engineer to get a full and clear understanding of what it was Phoenix had said. She asks God to help her accept the things she cannot change and says, I probably would have been in a better situation if I would have just stuck with how I used to be. She goes on to say, the only person that won't let me down is me. She is clearly very emotional and distressed and it was evident that Phoenix was struggling deeply with something. The video was recorded just one month before she disappeared. In March 2014, a reported sighting of Phoenix came in. One of Phoenix's friends from church was getting ready to fly back from Vegas and all the passengers were boarding the plane. As she sat down, she says Phoenix walked past her in the aisle with a group of women and two older men. Her friend said she called out her name and the lady turned round and looked at her. She said, sorry, do I look like someone? And carried on walking. 
Her friend noted that the women all looked similar to Phoenix and the men appeared to be around 10 years older than the women. When she got off the plane, she ran straight to the service desk and reported that she had seen a missing person. Although the police quickly began searching the area, no trace of the woman in question was ever found. Her friend said on a scale of 1 to 10 of how confident she was that it was Phoenix Colden, she was a definite 9. Many tips came in that would lead the family and police nowhere. Everything from fake phone calls with people pretending to be the missing Phoenix, to tip-offs claiming that Phoenix was involved in a cult and couldn't escape. But one tip in particular would cost the Coldens dearly. A man provided seemingly credible information about Phoenix's whereabouts, and Goldier and Lawrence spent their remaining savings on a private investigator to follow up on this lead. The lead turned out to be nothing more than a cruel hoax. Goldier and Lawrence had reached their financial limits and were forced to make a quick sale on their home. They had to move out of the area and the family home that they had loved so much. During the 2018 look into Phoenix's case, Shondrea Thomas and Joe Delia found that Phoenix had two birth certificates, one under Phoenix Colden and one under Phoenix Reeves. A private investigator looked into the certificate under the name of Reeves and found that there was actually a Phoenix Reeves. This Phoenix Reeves had no social security number and no associated birth date. The only thing that linked with that name was an address that was listed as being occupied between the dates of January 2012 and June 2012. Before January 2012, this Phoenix Reeves did not exist, and this person would cease to exist after June of that year. The person living in the house at the time of the 2018 investigation said she had been the sole occupier of that house since 2002, and no one by the name of Phoenix had ever lived there. Although eerie and a most definitely interesting lead, it appeared that this was nothing more than a strange coincidence. One thing that is for certain is that since Phoenix disappeared, no money has been taken from her bank accounts. No forms of identification have been renewed, and her digital footprint is non-existent. Everything seemed to stop on December 18th, 2011. Therefore, the possibility of this case ultimately being a homicide has never been ruled out. What happened to 23-year-old Phoenix Colden on December 18th, 2011 remains a total mystery, and no trace of her has ever been found. Was she abducted on December 18th? Did she leave of her own accord to start a new life? It is still an ongoing case and her family and friends continuously pray and hope for answers. Her parents believe that she is still alive and being held somewhere against her will. They have never given up hope that she will one day come home. If you have any information relating to the disappearance or whereabouts of Phoenix Colden, please contact the Spanish Lake Police Department.